this is going to be the video that you're going to want to watch. Hi everyone, my name is Bruce, and if this is the first video on my channel that you've ever seen, well good, because this one is gonna be action-packed. I put a lot of preparation and work into producing the documents for basically today's whole presentation. And that will be the presentation of my trading journey for the whole month of May. That's right, this month I took meticulous track and order of all of my trades, of my day trading uh, every day, and I put them together in a few different spreadsheets, and we're gonna look at it together. Now I'm not gonna get into like every single trade because uh, yeah, one of the problems I had this month was over trading a ton. So we'll get into basically, you know, my goal setting, how I did on my goal setting, how I did on individual trading days, how many red days I had, how many green days I had, uh, and also problems that I had. Did I over trade too much? Did I not cut my losses soon enough? Uh, did I not, you know, did I go shorthanded on wins where I could have made more money where I actually just, you know, sold because I wanted to take profit a little too early? So we're gonna get into all of that. It's gonna be very action packed. I wanna start off by putting this up on the screen. 3.07K, 3.07K. $3,070 is how much money we made this month or how much money I made this month day trading. And I'm not a big time day trader. Uh, to brief again, people that have been watching my channel for a while know that I've only been day trading for six months. I've been investing for about two and a half to three years, but I started day trading about six months and that you know six months ago basically is where I said to myself, hey, I'm gonna get serious now, Bruce, and I'm gonna start actually learning how I can day trade and make those sweet, sweet 10 Ds every single day, <laughs> basically. That was the gist of, of what had happened there. So I got really serious about day trading, and well, my first five months were awful. I, uh, you know, I, I'm paper trading a little bit, but I wanted to get real capital in there. And this month is the first month where I really tried to trade at least, you know, a little bit every single day. Um, and where I really became a, a bit more determined and a bit more defined in what my actual goals were. So let's go on to that portion of, of, of the video now um, where we're actually going to look in deep, look deeper at what this 307K actually means because I'm trading with around $20,000. So this equates to, uh, yeah, just over 10% for the month. And we're gonna look at that numbers all in um, fine detail. So from May, 3.07K, $3,000, pretty cool in my opinion. Let's look at it on a daily breakdown. So here we are, daily breakdown. And yeah, you can see my mouse. Okay, so day one, negative 28, day two, you know, negative 500, plus 13, plus 1.5K, this was a huge day. This was, you know, a normal day. This was a normal day. This was a little bit of an above average day. This was a great day as well. And then we had a terrible day. It's negative 600, plus 100, negative $1,000 in this day. Now this day really hurt. Um, I don't think I've ever lost a thousand dollars in one day. Um, that was crazy. I, I've never, you know, I, I've never lost a thousand dollars in a day. So the feeling that I had, I just didn't cut losses, and you know, I'm happy about it now because it's good learning experience. And I ended up green for the month. But think about it: to lose a thousand dollars in a day, and, and this is me coming from okay you know, making $25 an hour, $30 an hour, $50 an hour at max, you know, on select actual labor jobs that I do, to lose $1,000 in a day, I mean, that actually does really hurt, <laughs> me being a uh, normal financial, you know, normal financially, uh, and just starting out in life, $1,000 in a day, that's a huge loss, but anyway, let's get back into it. I was determined on the 17th, I gotta make that 1000 back. So I made that thousand back <laughs> and um, you know, on the 18th, I didn't do much. I didn't do much on the 19th. Um, another killer day for me 
was the $600 day. This was great. I had felt like I had a great day. I was really in my rhythm on this day. And then I'm down a thousand. And once again, I thought, oh my gosh, a thousand dollars I'm down. <sighs> this is crazy. I'm getting a little bit too aggressive here. So no, tomorrow, all I'm going to try to do is make it back a little bit and then some. And that's exactly what I did. Yesterday, I didn't have a good day in the market either. And today, I just hit my goal targets. So I know that might have been a little bit boring. We went through every single day and I keep talking about my goal targets. Well, what exactly even are my goal targets? Well, you know, I made a, I, I made a spreadsheet essentially and here's how I defined my goal. So I went on Google and I thought, okay, I'm gonna go do a daily compound interest calculator and I'm gonna try to figure this whole thing out. And we're gonna actually do this together on the video right now. On the video right now, we're gonna do this together so, so we can actually do this. And you can do this on your own to do your own goal setting. So I wanted to know, okay, what is a reasonable amount that I can expect to make you know, per day trading, right? No matter the amount, I don't care about what the amount is. It's all the same. The only difference in the amount of money that you're trading with, whether it's you know a thousand dollars, ten thousand, a um, hundred thousand, right? It becomes more substantial actually financially for you. If you make twenty dollars in a day day trading, yeah, okay, that's cool, but it doesn't have an effect on your well-being. If you make you know two hundred dollars or two thousand dollars on the day day trading, that's actually where it actually becomes you know, substantial. And with that 3K, I mean, I could pay all my month's bills with that, just that 3K, but we're going to keep it in the trading account. But just saying, I mean, the numbers become a little bit more substantial. So psychologically, it carries a bit more weight. But the gist of what I'm getting at is that you really want to identify a percentage. What is that percentage that you're going to make per day? So for me, that percentage was 1%. Yeah, just 1%. Per day. So that means if I'm trading with $20,000, then that means that I want to have just a $200 day. And that seems reasonable. Then my day is going to be satisfied when I've made $200, right? And I did hit some of those $200 days. $200 days, $200 days, $200 days. There's a lot of inconsistency around here. I'm up way too big, um, which may seem weird. But I'm also down way too big too. So that's maybe one of the problems where I didn't set my stop loss. But anyway, I digress. Let's go back to the compound interest calculator and let's figure this whole thing out, okay? So what are you gonna start trading with? Now, I'm actually lucky enough to have just spent the last year just grinding every day. And I accumulated approximately $20,000 is what I'm trading with right now. And I know it sounds like a lot, even to me, it sounds like a lot to be trading with, like just starting fresh six months. Like, do I trust myself trading with $20,000 every day? <laughs> uh, I'm not quite sure yet, but you know, anyway, that's what we're trading with. So after working a ton, busting my tail for like, you know, maybe a year, uh, maybe eight months to a year, I, I really got that 20,000 um, in my account. And one more thing that I do want to mention, you did see there were trades every single day. Uh, and I actually traded multiple times per day. But you know, if you know about trading, you would ask, Bruce, how is that possible? You're only trading with $20,000. And that's correct. So there's a thing by FINRA, uh, it's called the Pattern Day Trader Rule, the PDT Rule. And you can look this up. So if you have less than $25,000 in your trading account, uh, within your margin trading account, then you can only make three day trades in every five business days, right? So if you make a day trade Monday, if you make a day trade Tuesday, if you make a day trade Wednesday, then the only the next time you can day trade is the next Monday. So it's really limiting. Um, obviously, I didn't do that. Now, what I did, I kind of, you know, I, I flushed the account a little bit. I flushed it a little bit ahead. So I put, you know, I started the month with like 19,000. I flushed it ahead, um, 7,000. So it was approximately $26,000 in my account that I was trading with this month. Just, um, you know, I want to have my account be untouchable where I'm not 
withdrawing from this account since it is so small. But just to get me over that hump of the 25K, I just wanted to like, you know, basically loan myself the money to go and uh, to go and trade above that 25K threshold. And I have the intention of taking that 6K out. So for all intents and purposes of our um, calculations today and the spreadsheets that we're looking at, we're going to we're going to look at, you know, as if I started with 19,000 and that's how we're, we're going to play it. So to go back to the compound interest calculator, I know I've kept you waiting for a little bit. So let's just, you know, put in, okay, let's put in a sample amount. Let's put in a thousand dollars and let's say that we want to increase that once per day, 1% per day uh, for, for one year. Let's do one year. Let's include, no, we don't want to include all days a week. We only want to have weekdays because the stock market's closed on the weekend, obviously. Our daily reinvest rate, this is interesting. Okay, from your gain, do you want to reinvest all of it or do you want to take a portion of your profits? So you could take 50%, 65%, 100%. Um, you know, you don't have to take any. But one thing that you do have to note and the largest, the largest, you know, contributor to this is taxes. If you're being a day trader uh, and you make a profit in the year, in the year's time, you got to pay taxes on that. Um, and their short-term capital gains, from my experience and my insight, um, I, of course, I've not paid taxes on day trading yet because I've not, you know, turned a profit yet. I just started trading six months ago. I've not filed my taxes with my day trading. Uh, profits. Um, but anyway, uh, taxes are going to be huge. So it, they're counted as short term capital gains, which is just think of it as your normal income. So in America, we have normal tax brackets, right? Figure out what bracket you fall in. What do you make $80,000 a year, then that's your tax bracket. And that's how your your day trading, you know, day trade is is taxed. But you know, at most, you're going to have what probably 25 30% taxes. If you're living in California and you're making a, you're rolling, you're going to have to be paying like 55% tax. I live in the great state of uh, Washington where there is no state tax. So I'm only paying that federal tax. So, you know, that's something just to consider that I'm going to have to take at least 25%, you know, 20 to 25% off the top from my profits just to pay my taxes. Of course, I don't have to take that out every day. But, you know, just something to know when trying to grow your trading account. We're going to do no additional deposits and we're going to start today, the 31st of May. So we can see that it calculated this for us. And this is just a simple exponential equation, but it's good to just do it online and have it done for us. So $1,000 principal amount turned into $13,558 uh, in a year. So in 366 days at a compound rate of, of 1%, we've got $13,500. So this is what I did for my spreadsheet. So without further ado, let's actually go into my spreadsheet here and it's not maximizing. What's going on here? Give me one second. Okay, cool. Got the spreadsheet. Here we are. So this is me and this is tailored to what I want to do. There we are, we can actually zoom in now. It wasn't working for a second ago, which was weird. So once again, my initial balance I started with on May 1st of 2023, the beginning of this month was $19,795.74. So that's the amount that I started this whole investment projection with. That's the time when I actually hammered down and said, okay, I've got to set a goal for myself it's going to be 1% per day, which may not seem like a lot if you're day trading, right? If I'm trading with $20,000, $200 doesn't seem that juicy. But when you compound that over two years, that becomes $586,000 account. And with this, I computed a 65% reinvest rate. So that means I'm taking 45% off the top, which I don't need to do right now. But I would like to, maybe in six months, maybe in a year, to start taking some of my profits. But for now, I'm not going to take anything away because I want to invest 100% of it and reinvest it 
so that I can get my money built, you know, as fast as possible. And then maybe once I'm at like 50K or 75K later on this year, then I'm gonna maybe start taking a little bit of, uh, pro of my profits, you know, as a reward for all of my hard work and doing the day trading. So that's why we see total interest, 871,000, uh, whereas the investment account value is actually 586 because, you know, in this two years time, we have already taken off um, approximately $300,000 from the top, which is a pretty juicy, uh, which is a pretty juicy, if you think of it as like a salary. So with this plan, if I execute just 1% per day, if I execute just 1% per day, I'm telling you, I can make $150,000 a year, which is pretty cool for me being 23 years old and living in the big city. So to go back to it, this is what we have calculated. And I literally just screenshotted this from the calculator site that we looked at, right? Reinvest rate of 65%, earnings, cash out, balance. So this is what we should have done. We're looking at May right now. We should have earned $4,893. We should have reinvested just 65% of that, $3,100. And we should have cashed out $1,700. And our total balance should be $22,976 from starting at $19,795. Now you can notice, and let me go back here, you can tell right off the bat I made three hundred seven or three thousand seventy dollars. I didn't hit my goal. I did not make forty eight hundred. I made three thousand, but that's actually closely aligned with what that um, with what that reinvest is after the cash out. So I think we're feeling fine. I didn't take any money out this month, so you know we're fine. I didn't quite make a one percent per day, uh, but I think that we are pretty close to our goals. We're just maybe $100 off. So here is the actual spreadsheet that I'm tracking. And I made this myself. I filled it in. I actually filled it in. I got uh, ambitious, filled it in for the whole year. So just for fun, let's go see how much we're going to have on Christmas, the 25th. We're going to have $60,000 by Christmas, starting with an amount of 20000 which is it, pretty cool. Most of those huge gains that I talked about are going to be made in year two, of course, because that's how compound interest works. Okay, friends, let's look at May 2023. Since it's the last day, I just want to take a moment and look at this sheet and, and, and think about it and think about it, okay? So I've highlighted so it'll show me my red days and my green days. I had more green days than red days, but looking at this, this is what I hate here. I hate the negative 1,000, the negative 1,000. I hate those. I do not wanna be losing that much money per day. And this is a huge thing that I did uh, or that I didn't do. I didn't really use stop losses. I know, I know that's the number one rule. Just set a stop loss and forget it. So if you know the thing I'm trading falls below you know profitability and falls into the red, you should set a stop loss at maybe, okay, okay, 1% loss, I'm done, I'm out of that trade. But I didn't do that. On some days, I lost 4% of my account in a single day, which is insane. And, um, you know, if the issue persists, could be very disastrous towards my compound growth. So let's go look again. And I put out this little percentage. This is gonna be the percentage gain per month based upon 23 trading days. So based upon 23 trading days, um, after we take our cash outs, our account is gonna grow by 15.3%. So I actually didn't plug in the 30th and the 31st. So let me just do that right now. So on the 31st, or I'm sorry, today's the 31st, on the 30th yesterday, we lost $614.68 trading. Today, we made $224.91. Okay, um, so is that gonna, 
do the percentage here for me. Nope. So for some reason, it's only pasting value. Okay, anyway, we'll do that later. I don't wanna get bogged down in like literally doing spreadsheeting, uh, but here's what we're gonna do. We're looking at this, we're looking at this. So our count should be at 22,646. And I think that's about where it is right now. Uh, mind you, that extra 6K, um, that I put in at the beginning of the month I'm gonna take out. So yeah, just checking and confirming. That's where I am with my account. I was just checking on my phone real quick. So we are pretty close. We're only $300 off. And I think that's a pretty good accomplishment. So let's move this and we're just gonna see how our percentages compare. So we did make 14% on our money. Uh, we were supposed to make 15% on our money. Of course, we didn't take any drawdowns. So this was a huge thing that actually saved us. Uh, I was very, I wasn't far, you know, I was kind of far from my goals of profitability. See here, this I took the average of our percent gain per month. So the average, you know, this column over here is showing the goals that we did from our compound interest calculator. Um, and it's 1%, right? So this, I actually put together an average. This is the percent return every day. I need to fill this in so it's not exactly accurate, but the percent return per day is 0.9%. So we are about 10%, you know, about 10% away from hitting our goal, basically. But that's what I like to do with goals is shoot high and then, you know, aim high and then whatever I do, it's gonna be better. It's gonna be a better, um, you know, success than if I'd aimed low. So, you know, if I said, okay, I only wanna make $1,000 this month, yeah, maybe I hit $1,000, but I'm not really trying to get ahead. So that's why I did this aggressive 1% per day goal, which is approximately 15% portfolio growth uh, after reinvestments every month. So it is really aggressive. Um, it's probably, yeah, 4,800 on 19. Uh, let's do that calculation real quick on the good old, the good old calculator right here. So yeah, 4,800 divided by um, 19,700. Yeah, that's approximately a 25% portfolio gain per month. Uh, which is insane to think about when you think about it like that. It's pretty crazy because, you know, my long-term investments in the S&P 500, in VTI, in VOOO, uh, or just VOO. Did I say three O's there? I think I did. But anyway, what's interesting um, is that those investments are only making me 8% per year on average. So I'm trying to make 25% per month which is also a pretty crazy thing for me to attempt to do. But anyway, regardless, that's what we're gonna be doing. And this is like, you know, this is how it's how it's working out for us so far. So I think we're having a good, a good time at it so far. Now, one last thing that I wanted to do, I found this new app called Tradezilla. And there's actually another YouTuber named Umar Ashraf on YouTube who made Tradezilla actually. So he actually made this application. He's another day trader on YouTube. This guy's actually like really successful. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I think I see videos where it's like, I made $15 million in the past 10 years trading. So definitely a successful day trader made this whole application where the whole premise is to journal your trades, right? A good thing to think about is going back at the end of the day and reflecting on what day trades you made. And we didn't even launch into like what I'm trading here, how I'm trading, what my strategies are. But of course that's, you know, that is 80% of it. Tracking the numbers is, you know, a fraction of, it's not even something that's gonna contribute to me making money in the market. Me actually having a strategy, me actually tracking what I'm doing in the market, that is going to elicit the returns for me. So 
on Tradezilla, I wanted to show you here, I plugged in my last month. Um, and here's my last month. So 3,070, just like we had seen. Uh, trade win percentage. So it just really breaks it down, crushes it, gives us the analytics for the trades. Really great platform I'm loving so far. I've only been using it for about three days for plugging in this month for the video. So trade win ratio is 76%. This reflects the percentage of your winning trades out of total trades taken. So I had 43 winning trades. I had 13 losing trades. And I had four break-even trades. Now I had a lot of winning trades compared to my losing trades. But what's interesting here is if we look at my average win-loss trade, it's sub one. It's 0.44 as the ratio. So my average win is $230, which is right on that goal actually, which is pretty cool. But my average loss is $527. So what does that tell me? That tells me that I need to start setting stop losses that I let my losers ride for too long. I would have made probably so much more money this month if I just capped my losers at $200 instead of letting it ride to an average of $500 saying, nope, after I've lost $200 on this trade, I don't care where the heck it's going, I'm cutting my losses, okay? That's a smart thing to do because the number one rule in day trading is preserve capital, right? Yeah, we're trying to make money here, but if we don't preserve capital, then it's all for naught because we're gonna lose all of our money in the market because the market does not care. The market's gonna take your money. So, you know, you gotta tread carefully here. Let's go back to Tradezilla. So yeah, my profit factor, total profits divided by total losses, a profit factor above one indicates a profitable trading system. Apparently my profit factor is good. In the month, I made 9,900 in total profit, but I lost 6,800. Does that sound right? That doesn't sound right to me. I don't know. That sounds like a lot. I don't think I, I don't know. Anyway, I plugged these in. I put, you know, I plugged in the CSV data, so it might not be 100% accurate, but it's good enough metrics for me. It's letting me know that, hey, at least what I'm doing is working, but I let my, you know, my, I want my winners, my average win, I want my average win to be above my average loss, not vice versa. So this is really bad, I really need to work on this. My day win loss is 60%. So I had 11 winning days, I had seven losing days, and four pretty much break even days, right? So let's look at the calendar here. And I don't know if it's exact, It there seems to be some like days that are different on here. Um, but yeah, we can see one trade, one trade, two trades, two trades, two trades, two, two, one, one, three, two, one, two, one, one, three, three. Uh, Wednesday, I was just balling out. I made 15 trades <laughs> um, and not as effective. You see, I only made $600. You'd think if I made more trades, I'd be wanting to make more money, but no. So this shows me that like, okay, in one trade on this day, I made almost 900 bucks. And in 15 trades, I barely made 600. So insightful. I made 14 trades today. I This day, I think I just just wasn't, didn't have my head straight. Um, on I made five trades this day where I made it all back. And three trades yesterday. Um, I did make 12 trades today. Uh, but that's something interesting. I wanted to try out a little bit of like um, options. <laughs> not that I'm going crazy on options, I'm, I'm not. But in the past few videos that we've done on the channel, um, I've actually talked a little bit about options and I never really, you know, I didn't really even understand them before. I thought, oh, it's way too confusing with the puts and the calls. You know, with anything, when you actually immerse yourself into the subject, you find that it's a lot easier to understand. You know, once you put in those hours, once you start trying to figure it out, it becomes a lot easier. So I wanted to play around and dabble with options. So I did that today. Um, 
So I actually broke it up here. I've got my trades and my options trades. So let's uncheck my trades. Oh, let's uncheck my option, my trades actually, sorry. So today I made 146 trading options, which means that I didn't really do much uh, good actually stock trading today. Maybe I made only a hundred bucks, but my options trade, I mean, I did pretty well today. So I made two trades and this was really cool. So this is actually really insightful, all of this data. And let's break open this 150% net ROI, return on investment, which is crazy because I did this in like 30 minutes. So with options, <laughs> options are really scary. So for me, I'm not going to buy more than $100 of options. I'm not going to do it because I know you could easily, as easily as it can go up in value, it can just drop to zero. And this was a yeah, zero day to expiration call on SPY. And I only put a I only put $96 in it was my adjusted cost. That's crazy that I made $144 or 150%. I mean, insane. Just, just crazy. Just insane. I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, what? $144? Yeah, I bought three contracts for 32 cents and I sold the three contracts for 80 cents just how long later, how much later? 42 minutes later and 42 minutes. It was really cool to watch. And that's an amount at 100 bucks where for me, yeah, it would suck to lose $100, but okay, um, I could risk it. Like I'm okay if I lose it. I want to try out the options and I do the options paper trading as well, but I just wanted to see what it's actually like. So this tradezilla actually gives me a really cool thing too. gives me um, a graph and actually shows me where I bought. So I bought right here. Let's zoom it out. And it actually shows me where on the SPY that I bought, which is really great because on Webull, it actually doesn't show me the overlay of the chart. I'm kind of just looking at, oh, my options now worth 35 cents, but I don't know where the SPY is. So obviously I bought a call on SPY uh, at four, a 418 call. Um, and this was called out of the money because I wasn't at 418. You can see I bought this at 417 and 18 cents. That's called out of the money. And that makes it actually, that means it's like less probable that I'm going to make money because it's got a farther way to go to be in the money and to have value. It's got to be, it's got to go, it's got to move farther to even have value in the first place. Um, but there's also a trade off. They are cheaper. I only got these for 32 cents, whereas the in the money contracts, we're about a dollar forty per contract, and again, a contract uh, equals a hundred shares, basically. Um, so it's a hundred. So thirty-two cents. So each one of these cost me thirty-two dollars to buy. Uh, that's how that works. Very simply. So we next just see the overlay. As soon as I bought these, uh, we dip down probably 15 cents, which was a bummer. I was like, okay, all right, didn't work out for me here. But it's only 100 bucks, so I'm not feeling panicky. I'm not losing all, I'm not losing my shirt over here. So I just held it, and I wrote it out. And simultaneously to this, I also was, you know, day trading um, TQQQ, which is the NASDAQ ETF. The SPY is the S&P 500 ETF. So it's kind of doing a different bunch of different things here. Uh, we can see that I was riding up here and I think at this point I was like, oh my gosh, my contracts are up 60%. What? 60% I made in a few minutes? Crazy. You know, I kept holding, I kept holding. I said, okay, I at least want to try to get to 418. So I did get to 418. And briefly, you know, this was the 418 mark. I like that it marked it for me basically, no, this is 418. I don't know what that line symbolizes. 
Uh, anyway, we hit the 418 mark and I sold at 418.48. Of course, we kept going up a little bit, but you know, I, I was done with the trade at that point. So anyway, let's go back to the dashboard here. And yeah, that was a good day doing options. You know, using $100 I made $146. Uh, this is another call that I bought on SQQQ, which is actually betting for the market to go down. So it, it gets confusing, the calls and the puts and the shorts and the longs. Essentially, I bought a call for the market to go down. So this thing moves up. When I'm buying a call, I want the thing to move up. And um, you know, this thing represents the NASDAQ index going down in value, as simply as I can put it. So we can see as soon as I bought this thing, it just started selling off. It was not a lucky time for me. Um, and we can see that I sold it actually quite far above. Options don't necessarily work exactly to price scale. They have a ton of other different variables that I don't even understand myself, but uh, you know, I made $2 profit or 2% profit on this trade. So that's basically it. Is there anything else that I want to show you? Yeah, there's one more thing that I want to show you. Okay, so let's go to next month, June 2023. This is going to be exciting. This is going to be exciting. We're going to start the month off with $22,646.97. And we'll put commas in there just to make it look neat. So this is what we're, okay, it rejected my comma. This is what we're going to work towards. This is what we're going to work towards. $26, uh, 20, yeah, 22,646.97. And we are going to shoot to bring our count up to $26,000 and four hundred and. $26,496. So we're going to attempt to make about $5,400 with our drawdown amount this month. So that's the last thing that I wanted to show you all. That's what our goal is going to be for June. And I'm going to keep you updated. We're going to do another recap like this in a month's time. And we're going to be doing videos sprinkled throughout the month, tracking how I'm doing with my trading and tracking how I'm doing. To answer the last final question, what even am I trading? Well, on most days, I'm trading the NASDAQ and I'm trading ETFs that are triple leveraged in both directions on the NASDAQ. So the NASDAQ is ticker symbol QQQ. That is the ETF, exchange traded fund. For the NASDAQ is QQQ. TQQQ is triple leveraged NASDAQ ETF. SQQQ is short triple leveraged NASDAQ ETF, right? So that's what I'm trading usually most days. Uh, it's not as volatile as some crazy things people try trading, uh, in my view, because it tracks the NASDAQ. I mean, it's tracking a whole index, uh, but it's triple leveraged. So that means if the NASDAQ returns 1% that day, then this ETF that I'm trading, if I buy TQQQ, uh, you know, is levered three times. So it makes 3% on the day. So it makes it easier for me to hit my 1% per goal target because theoretically I only have to capture about a third of a percent of value from the NASDAQ every day. I mean, that's as simple as simply put as it is. That's my goal to take only three quarters of a percent or a, a, a third to take only a third of a percent from the NASDAQ every day and then I'm golden. I've hit my goal. And by Christmas, I've made 60K. So that's my goal. Um, that's my whole breakdown. You know, we went over some things that were my weaknesses, which I think are really good to point out. And Tradezilla, Tradezilla really helped me with that. Actually going over what my weaknesses were, not setting stop losses, you know, letting the, letting the losses get out of hand. If I just stopped trading that day, if I said, nope, I lost $200, I'm not going to trade anymore today, I would have made a lot more money this month, which seems weird because 
okay, I've lost 200 bucks. I want to try to make more money today. But in the grand scheme of things, if I just tamper down my losses, then my wins are going to prove out and actually boost my account up in value. So that's it for today. Once again, let's look. We're going to hit $5,400 in profit. That is our goal for this month. So everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. I know we're at almost 40 minutes, but I wanted to go do a super extreme uh, look, hyper look into what my goal targets are as a new day trader. And a 1% goal target, I don't think is too ambitious of me to do. When you think about it in terms of like a two year or five year scale, doing a 1% per day challenge for that sustained period becomes some serious money. Uh, so everyone, thank you so much for watching again. My name is Bruce Bradbury. If you liked this video, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and comment down below. What are you trading? How'd you like the video? What's going on? Should we do more informal uh, vlog videos like this bef um, You know, for you in the future? Let me know in the comments below, whatever you wanna know, and I can't wait to hear from you. Okay, folks. Have a good one. Have a good night. Bye.